queer ecologies colon sex nature politics desire is a 2010 publication by two scholars Katriona Mortimer Sandlands and Bruce Erickson in which they have defined queer ecology as a new practice of ecological knowledges, spaces and politics that places central attention on challenging heteroecologies from the perspective of non-normative sexual and gender positions. So clearly what is at stake is that Sandy Lance and Erickson uh, they, uh, they are arguing in that book that the traditional ways of looking at nature and in fact that includes the, uh, the general ecologists or ecofeminists looking at nature also is by and large heteronormative. Though, though they are against the patriarchal pattern and then they hold this is responsible for the exploitation of nature, plunder of nature, etc. But that is primarily done from a uh, woman-centric point of view, woman-centric and nature-centric. The queer more or less had remained outside the purview of eco-criticism. So this is the contribution of Sandy Lance and Bruce to include queer in the ecological perspective or ecological perspective in the queer. Generally also as we have observed in our <coughs> discussion of the queer that the society or cultures, dominant verses of society and cultures, they perceive uh, queer sexuality as something, uh, you know, unnatural by which they prioritize the heterosexuality which they think to be natural. But then queer ecologists as much as queer theorists have shown that this kind of view is based on a very very facile observation of nature because homosexuality and uh, other kinds of non-normative non-reproductive sexualities are visibly present in nature and in fact in fact it is uh, pervasive throughout all natural categories that you know reproduce sexually homosexual behavior is found path-breaking works in this include bruce wagon mills biological exuberance colon animal homosexuality and the natural diversity published in 1999 and john rob gardens evolutions rainbow colon diversity gender and sexuality in nature and people both these show how there is a spectrum of divergent sexualities in the natural world as much as in the human world. So, the thesis that homosexuality or queer sexualities are unnatural is basically ill-founded and I repeat based on facile observations. Another important factor that they bring to consideration is that Generally, in our formations like social formations and social ideas like they say the child is the future of the nation, of whichever nation for example. By this kind of formations and ideologies, we also have children's day and all that. Uh, we also negate the very unethically the position of people who are childless, who are unmarried, childless may be by choice also, antinatalist philosophers or believers in antinatalism are there. And not only that, this prioritization of the child according to queer ecologists inundates in a way paths of future exploitation of nature also. Because as you are aware of the concept of anthroposim, one more human child means uh, <clears throat> a lot more burden on nature. Uh, so there are there are reasons to think otherwise. The whole problem has started because of the 
I would rather say European idea because it is not there in the Eastern traditions. European or Judeo-Christian idea that man is the center and God created the world for man's enjoyment, man again, not human, which has led finally to Renaissance, Industrial Revolution and all that, though apparently they rejected the biblical tradition, but the inner spirit was that it was anthropocentric and uh, by the 20th century we have come in at such a point where there is uh, few that can be done to undo the damages that we have done to nature and then consequently ourselves. To the contrary, the Indian idea for example is that everything exists in a continuum. This has been referred to by Vanduna Shiva in her book Earth Democracy. Vasudhaiva Kutumbakam, we believed in that. We cannot say believe because colonial violence or epistemic violence of colonialism made us forget these things. Though uh, legendary leaders like Gandhi and Tagore, they tried their best to reconnect ourselves with nature. But anyway, that is, I mean, about ecology. Coming back to the issue of queer ecology again, we can have a look at uh, the film Broke Back Mountain, for example, where there are two male lovers in the backdrop of a range of mountains, Broke Back Mountains. Now, generally, mountains, uh, oceans, etc., this kind of natural setup, when they are represented as symbols of lovers, the image is image that is invoked is quite heteronormative or heterosexist. Not so in Brokeback Mountain because it is two male lovers that are in love in the backdrop of a range of mountains which in a way uh, reflect and again reinscribe their own love affair. Concomitant to this drive in ecological uh, consciousness in queer theory or queer consciousness of ecological theories which we call queer ecology there is a subfield we can say queer ecofeminism the leader here is leading figure is Greta Gerd uh, sorry Greta Gerd who actually in an article published in 1987 he, uh, uh, towards a queer ecofeminism, the name of the article is Towards Queer Ecofeminism. Uh, they actually, what she wants to say there is that both Western sexuality and Western religious traditions have been ashamed of acknowledging the erotic which again especially is related to women and they suffer from a kind of erotophobia or fear of the erotic. This has given birth to devaluation of women, nature and also queer sexualities. So it is the onus of the queer eco-feminists to reclaim as uh, God says other forms of sexualities, other forms of uh, looking at nature and other forms of respecting and revering women. This is slightly new because generally we are given to understand in feminist theory that women are respected in patriarchal culture so much as, so much as they are uh, bearers of children. So that kind of reproductive sexuality is allowed. But going by Greta Gerd's argument, we can see that the entire Western civilizational attitude is basically misogynist because it suffers from an erotophobia or fear of women which is basically fear of female sexuality as if sexuality were only female and this has resulted basically again from the religious traditions. So these things have to be undone. So to conclude I would say both you know, queer ecocriticism and queer ecofeminism, they argue that uh, queer studies or queer ideologies or queer concerns and ecological concerns are close allies and uh, 
the more they walk together the better for all of us actually there are of course many more things to say but then these are again as i always say introductory videos and i would also like to know your views thanks for listening